Hey, so welcome back to another amazing episode. Now you are asking why am I in a car driving? Yes, this week's episode is not filmed in Accra. As a matter of fact, we are on our way driving to Central Region. And you are asking why? A diasporan who, American to be precise, who moved back from the US decided to leave nowhere but the central region very far away from Accra so we need to go to her you know ask her why did she even decide to do that and why it's important for you watching to also do the same so come along with us while we go to the western to the central region <laughs> Hello and welcome back again to another amazing episode. My name is Hayford. If you don't know who I am, I'm a content creator, a cinematographer. And this episode is a diaspora transition episode. I am interviewing people who moved back from the diaspora and currently are here in Ghana and doing great things. So today I have here with me an awesome woman. As I told you earlier on, I had to move from Accra. I'm in the Western, uh, sorry, Central region to interview her. Without further ado, let me introduce you to Madame Alita, yeah. Welcome on the show. <laughs> Thank now, you. What is your full name again? Can you say that? Yes, I am Alita Yasha Allah. Okay. Yeah. Where, where did it come from? The Yasha Allah. It sounds Hebrew. Um, Yasha Allah is Hebrew. Okay. For Israel. Israel. And so yes, we are the children of Israel. We're the people in the book. Okay. And so that name is a representation of who I am. Mm. I'm a child of Israel. Yeah, descendant wow. of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Really? Yes. Now, that is that is a very interesting opening. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everyone says that. <laughs> Israel. For yeah. me, I know there's only uh, my color is not in Israel. I see light skinned people, mostly whites, mm -hmm. who are the Israelites. Are you trying to say they are not the original people? But yes, we are. that's exactly what I'm saying, that they are not the original people. We are, and everyone is imitating us, which is what the scripture says. And I'm going to give you the scripture when we're done so you can put it at the wow. bottom. It wow. says that they're going to be pretending to be us. us. And that the, basically we had our knowledge and our history and understanding taken from us because of constant and consistent disobedience to the Most High. Wow. And so he have made... Um, he have put those above us that are not a part of Israel. And so there's going he did it for a time frame and that time frame is up. And so now Israel is rising and more of us are not only moving back home, but we're owning land and we're understanding who we are as a royal wow. people. Because I wanted to ask you that. I see a lot of people moving back yep. from mostly America mm -hmm. and not just to visit, no but like to be here permanently yep it's the and second exodus okay so mm -hmm. what is happening in america that is really Ooh, that's a loaded question yeah. what's happening is um basically prophecy is unfolding mm. and so we have police brutality we have police brutality we have um a lot of our ch black children are being kidnapped we have people um taking our organs and and um selling them. Wow. Um, in America. Yeah, in America. All of this is happening, you know, in the high with the higher up. So it's not gonna get news coverage. It's not gonna be getting Ooh. media. You'll get a few, you know, ads here and there, but for the most part it's covered up because the higher ups are partaking in this corruption. Okay. And so um, the dollar is crashing. Mm -hmm. um, it's gonna be a cashless society. They're putting invoking a new world order which means it'll be martial law versus a government. Wow. And so basically we have no rights. They are wow. taking away our rights for everything wow. there. And so, yeah, we are understanding who we are as a people. So you see a lot of, um, of us going mm -hmm. natural. Mm -hmm. You know, we used to get our hair permed. Mm -hmm. So it's like about four or five, six years ago, right. you just start seeing this thing. And it wasn't a trend. Beyonce mm -hmm. didn't get on and say, hey, go natural. Cause that's normally how you make something go viral. Right. But no, it, is, it was a Naturally. mass awakening that people one by one started COVID to do it. made that possible? Um, I think COVID um, was a part, was, was at the end of the awakening. Mm. Like it was, we were already waking up in different aspects. You got a lot of people going vegan, mm -hmm. going vegetarian. And mm -hmm. that is not to say that that is law. It's more or less to say that 
we are understanding what we're putting in our body. We wow. are now caring what goes on our skin. Mm. We understand the complications that's involved with having chemical mm -hmm. in our food and in our mm -hmm. toothpaste and in our deodorants and things yeah. like that. And so, yeah, we're just waking up as a people and that's a domino effect. So it's gonna wow. be different people that um, understand mm -hmm. the laws of eating correctly. But then you got another group of people that's understanding the laws of living correctly and, and how you address and deal with people as far wow. as the fruits of the spirit being wow. kind being gentle being patient you know things like that so it's, it's just a domino effect that's, that's happening amazing. yeah I and mean, it's gonna <laughs> get bigger and bigger it's exciting see one kingdom has to fall for the next one to rise and the next one that's gonna rise we will oversee Wow. You know how we have, um, you see the higher ups are a certain color. Mm -hmm. You see the Japanese, mm -hmm. the um, white people, they have a certain structure, even mm -hmm. the Amish, they have a certain law in how they run their community. But us as a black people, we don't have our language, mm -hmm. we don't know our land, mm -hmm. we don't collectively work together. Mm -hmm. All of that has been taken from us. And so we're gonna start getting back to that order that wow. the Most High put in place initially. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So let me ask you this. Where in America did you grow up? Just to, you know, for the people watching to really know where you came from mm -hmm. and, and why you're saying what you're saying right now. Um, I come from the north side of Chicago. Okay. Um, and I was partly raised in Mississippi as well. So okay. I spent most of my summers in what they would call holidays. Okay. Um, I spent that in Mississippi and Illinois, Mississippi, Illinois, back and forth. Um, but in my state in America. I have also lived in Las Vegas, okay. um, Atlanta, okay. New York, Wisconsin. What do you used to do for a living in America? Um, I did international runway modeling okay. and I did a little bit of acting and hosting of events. Oh, okay. um, it's not something I like to bring too much light to mm -hmm. because I don't push that industry anymore. I want our women to behave a certain way and to, you know, be a certain way. And so, um, yeah. That's what I used to do. Now I'm here and doing all natural products and um, selling I land. Saw that. And I yeah. saw that. You, mm -hmm. you get to that. Okay. Now I want to. I wanted to ask you this. There's 55 countries in the whole of Africa. Okay. Why not Zimbabwe, mm. South Africa? Yes. Why not Namibia? Yeah. But you chose Ghana. Yeah. Why? Um, Ghana is all I knew when it came to Africa. Um, as you know, or may or may not know. The way that they show us Africa was that it was nothing here. It was dangerous here. It, it was um, not an opportunity here, no resources here. Almost in the same sense that they promote America. They show you guys that we are rich. New York. Yeah, New York, Soul Beyonce. Buildings. Yeah, all yeah. of this glamorous stuff. Right. And so you think that's all of us as a whole, that we have that type of money. That is We're living that type to of me. way. Yeah. I've seen on TV. Yeah, I it, want to it's go there. heaven. I, no, I need you don't need it. Right <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't need it. But that's, that's essentially what they gave us in America. Mm. When they show us Africa, they show a pot belly baby. Mm. And for one cent a day, one dollar a day, you can help this child wow. eat. And so all we thought is that, you know, there's a lack of food, a lack of resources, a right. lack of opportunities. Right. And so mm -hmm. I said all that to say that I came to Ghana in a study abroad program um, 17 years ago now. Okay. Because I've been okay. here almost two years. Oh, okay. And so I knew I would live here. I, okay. I had to finish college at the time, so I had to go back. But it was just this sense of belonging mm. and welcoming that I, mm. I just was like, wow, like wow. this is amazing. Wow. And so I said that to say, I don't know the other parts of Africa, because if it was left up, left up to America, I never even would have seen Ghana. Wow. But we had this one chancellor of my college put together a program, okay. and he brought about 20 of us to Ghana. Okay. The and chancellor, told, was he black? He was, okay, yes, okay, he was. Okay, yeah, his doc, shout out to Dr. Pulliam, may he rest in peace. Wow. Yeah. All right, peace. Now, let me ask you this. Are you seeing something here in Ghana or on the continent that the citizens or the natives are not seeing? Because the youth think before they succeed, they have to either go to UK, US, mm -hmm. or other Western countries. Mm -hmm. But you are saying, no, it's the opposite. Yeah. If you want to do something great, you know, Africa is the way to go. Mm -hmm. Ghana is the way to go. What are you seeing that we are blind to? Ownership. Mm. Coming here in America, I was able to own land. That's not an opportunity afforded in the UK mm -hmm. or the US. It is afforded to the Beyonce's and Jay-Z's because you can get a half a plot for half a million dollars. Okay. But here in, the, in, the, in Ghana, 
Um, and I, I only can specifically speak for Ghana. I can't speak for the entire continent. Okay. But this country is affording me land. Mm. It's affording my clients land at a reasonable price mm. and also ownership as far as I was able to start my businesses because there's so many resources here. Shea wow. butter, cocoa butter, oh, wow. um, black soap. Mm -hmm. You know, it's excessive amounts of it. It's plenty. Even when it comes to learning about herbs and literally um, maybe growing your own mango trees or avocado trees, that is not a part of our wow history or learning education in America. So I was in Ghana before I even knew what neem powder could do for me mm. in my sickness. I was in Ghana before I learned about moringa powder. Now we know the basics, ginger, garlic, but if I start to talk to you about um, peppermint herbs and hibiscus herbs and things like that, I'm going to lose, you know, a, a good bulk of the people I was around and I grew up with because mm -hmm. that is not taught to our culture. That's true. So coming here, it was, it was ownership of yourself. Mm -hmm. It was being self sufficient efficiently off of the grid mm -hmm. so because my goal is to have a borehole and a solar panel system on my land which okay. we'll talk about later yeah. um, and so yes yeah, self-sufficiency and ownership that is wow. what the rest of the world is not seeing wow. resources resources yeah wow <laughs> this is very it's getting very interesting yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me ask you this before we get into what you've been doing I've seen your products you're doing natural you know products and which we'll get into it later on okay how did your family react when you told them, hey, listen, I'm leaving America, I'm going to the continent, Africa, to live, I'm not coming back? How did they react? Well, they didn't have the, the, the grandest reaction that you probably are thinking, because mm. it sounds absurd, like right. you're going to a continent, you're not coming back. For me, um, like I said before, I was in the limelight as a model and actor and stuff. And so I traveled to London and Brazil and Mexico. And oh, so you used to travel? Yeah. And okay. so it was a familiar thing for me to move around. Even my college was away from where I grew up at. Okay. And so they were, they were not shocked to hear me say they're I was moving here. At that point? I think, yeah, at that point, they're very much so used to it. I think the shocking part came in that I will not go back. Oh, wow. I will not visit. <laughs> You hear me? You, you told I, them that. Yes, I will not <laughs> visit. And so I think that's important because my goal mm. is to get them here. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. if I never come back there, if you have, you know, you understand that you are never going to see me because I don't even plan to visit there. Wow. Then now they are starting to get their visas together, their passports together and make that first trip to another country. And wow. so I am evolving them I'm helping them to like get to a new level mm. of like what this world can offer wow. and so yeah they got to come here yeah, they, yeah. Should. they, they got to move here you know? <laughs> if they are watching right now yeah. they should move here yeah but let me ask you this what triggered all this move back what would you say triggered it for you um definitely the most high mm. it was just like him telling me wow. that um this was not it that it was a new chapter coming wow. For myself and he we couldn't unfold that in America wow. also America is doomed sorry mm. for anyone who doesn't want to hear it but America is going to fall it has to fall in order for wow. the new kingdom to rise wow. and so America is going to undergo a stream of things that are already happening mm. via prophecy in that book that they call a religious book but it's in fact a history book for my people mm. and so everything that it is talking about is already in, unfolding in America wow and so mm -hmm. that that's pretty but much it. history book meaning something that happened in the past yeah but then it's unfolding and the bible has predicted most of what is happening now yeah well but it's a stream it's a history book mm -hmm. to tell me my lineage okay my fourth mothers mm -hmm. my forefathers mm -hmm. my heritage my mm -hmm. language my mm -hmm. land um, and it's also a history in the understanding that these are black people in this book these are my people the whole world can teach it all they want, but they will not get the proper rep revelation until they uh, take that veil off their eyes and understand who are the people in this book. Wow. And so it goes to that stream, but then it also continues to go and say, hey, this world is full circle. Nothing is new under the sun. This is going to happen. I need this to happen because the most high is uh, a time. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's, he operates in a certain time mm. that there has nothing to do with the regular man's time. And so, yes, before he can, you know, 
unveil everything. This have to happen. This have to happen. There's a stream of things that has to happen. And that is what we're seeing in America. Wow. And so I'm leaving there and not going back because I understand what's to come for mm. America. Wow. Yeah. You, you said my people, my people. Who are your people? <laughs> my people is what the world will call African-Americans. Okay. My people is what the world will call Africans. Wow. My people are what the world will call um, Indians. Like there, there's a there's twelve tribes, wow. and my people fall up under these twelve tribes. I'm from the tribe of Judah, mm. and so that is what I mean when I talk about who my people are, because they have given us what the Bible will say a by, they've called us a byword. Mm. So they've changed our name a million times. First we was niggas, and then we were like Negroes, mm. then we were Americans, then we were African Americans, then we were colored, and then now we're, sometimes people just say black, where they just say yeah. I'm a crayon now, right. I'm just a color. Like, what do you call yourself? What are you? <laughs> I am Hebrew Israelite. I am a, I'm Hebrew. Yeah, wow. I'm a Hebrew Israelite. And then, you know, we will say these sayings, but we won't make sense of them, mm. because I've heard my people say, um, they trying to work me like a Hebrew slave. That's because the slaves was Hebrew. Mm. Like, and so these type of slant sayings we grew up with, but we didn't add any type of, you know, understanding to what we were really saying. Wow. And so, yeah, I am Hebrew. I'm not a color. I'm not a continent. Wow. Like, yeah, you can. And, and <laughs> you, you've moved back. You are here in Ghana. Yes. Okay. How are you adapting to the Ghana? You know, yeah. society and everything. I always get this question, and I want to be careful this time with answering the question because you guys dragged me in the comments for the things that I have to say about my experience here. Um, so my experience here, like I always like to start off, mm. has been wonderful in that I've been afforded opportunity that mm. I've never been afforded. Wow. That my family, my mother's never afforded, my grandmothers, my great-grandmothers, my great-great-great-grandmothers. For constant gen generations to come, they wasn't given the opportunities that I now have. Wow. I am breaking a generational curse by owning land alone. Oh, wow. Yeah, no one is in my family for decades back. Have in ever America. Learned. In America. You, are you trying to say you've never owned a land in America? No, and no one I know has ever loaned land in America. None of these people, that diasporans, they have not owned land in America. Wow. It is not our land. So who owns it? The white people. They've, wow. they've bought it all up. The Chinese people. Actually, the Chinese people own it because America is trillion dollars in debt to China. Mm. And so it's really them if they want to come start collecting. But they, they buy it by the masses. So the masses, they buy a lot. Wow. And so even if there is a little bit of land that's available to someone who wants to buy it, it's a half a million dollars. We don't, I'm, I'm contrary to what they show you all here, we don't make that type of money. Wow. Like, I've never seen a million dollars. I've wow. never seen a hundred thousand dollars. Wow. Like, yeah, dollars. So but it's like... I mean, I was convinced my uncles <laughs> had that money when they, they, they keep buying See, this America, nice house when they come America back the has changed our mindset in that mm. we keep up a certain look. We can dress very well. Mm. We will have on the latest. We mm. will wear Jordans, Louis Vuitton mm. belts, Gucci bags. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean we can afford it. That means we haven't no, been- wait, now I'm confused. How can you wear it if you can't afford, afford it? Because you have rent, light bill, gas bill, water bill, food to buy, children to take care of, and basically they don't have money management skills. Wow. So instead of paying that bill on time or making sure that child have this, they've chosen to get Jordans. Mm. Instead of making sure their wow. house is in order, they have gotten the latest flat screen TV because wow. in our community, it's about the look. So that's why you guys are kind of fooled in that mm -hmm. matter because we put on a good display right. so and I'm dress really it's nice. A lie. Oh, it's a, is, I'm trying to oh say it is God. a big. I'm telling you, it's the biggest <laughs> lie in the world. Like, I'm yes. tricky, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yes, it's the so biggest I lie in the world. Anymore. No, you should not. You not. You gonna get stuck there for one because <laughs> they about to close the airports down again. Wow. But no, we we have found out a way to portray ourselves a certain mm -hmm. way because America has told us what beauty is. Wow. America has told us what the standard mm -hmm. person should look like and be presented like. Exactly. And so we try to keep, keep up, up with that look mm -hmm. because we don't know any better. We didn't understand who wow. we were. We were lost mentally. Our pineal gland, which is the third eye, has been closed for over 400 years. So we're doing what we talk. But now it's opening. Now it's open. <laughs> and I will never, I have on nothing name brand. Like it's not, it's but like. I see, I see what you're worried. Yeah. 
in Ghana. Yes, 20, I was established in Ghana in 2020. What is yes. That? Tell me about it. It looks um, beautiful. It's thank you. It's a t-shirt company mm -hmm. that I started um, about a year ago mm. um, to be able to just get some of those looks out, to get some of those um, mm -hmm. slogans and quotes that I make myself out. I think wow. I'm really good with words. Wow. Um, and then because mm -hmm. there's so many diasporas mm -hmm. coming here, we're calling it the second exodus. As you know, the first exodus was when the Most High kept telling Moses to tell King Pharaoh to mm -hmm. let my people go. go. And eventually, over after numerous plagues, he finally let his people go. That was the first exodus. Now there's a second exodus happening wow. where we're all waking up and leaving what we thought was home, wow. and we're establishing ourselves in that place. Wow. So I established myself here in 2020, wow. and that's when I opened my first business. Mm -hmm. You know, just things like that. I got help with the bananas. Okay. What are you doing? Um, I have an all-natural product line, mm -hmm. so I make body butters, mosquito repellents, mm -hmm. deodorants, um, oh, hair wow. oil, hair cream. Mm. Um, I'm starting my facial washes and my body washes, oh, wow. and then I'll be moving into shampoo and conditioners, and then hopefully by next year I'll do like cleaning supplies, bleach, wow. pine saw, laundry soap, things like that. That's a lot. Yeah, I know, but you <laughs> know, I'm, I have, thank you. And, and that's, that's all you? Yeah, that's all me, all on my own, um, and it's a blessing because I could not get this creativity out in America exactly. because I was bombarded with a nine to five job. Mm -hmm. The white man told me to clock in mm -hmm. and clock out mm -hmm. and even to use the bathroom, I gotta raise my hand. Can I Getting go to the bathroom? The hour. Yeah, and I have to get permission to, to go to lunch, to eat. I'm hungry. Can I get permission to eat? You are, like, you are almost describing slavery to me. Thank right you. Now. It's a mental slavery. It mm. got pushed from physical, which we know about. That trade happened right here, actually. Yes. The Atlantic sla uh, trade, uh, mm -hmm. slave trade was right from here. Airport. That was physical. Mm. But when they moved us, they thought, okay, if we can take them out of bondage, we mm. can make more money off of them. Wow. So let's think they let's make them think they got a little bit of freedom. Mm. And so, yeah, they started to do the mental slavery which is why we will wear Gucci belts and don't own a home. Mm. Why we will get Jordans. That. Jordans for $2,000, $3,000. Oh, it's like, just to, yeah, just to say I got the first pair yeah. or the latest pair, yeah. that is mental that is slavery. That is a colonized mind. Wow. Like, yes. I see the energy coming from yes, you. Yes, <laughs> I just get excited. I love it. Yeah. I'm doing I some love great, it, things. You're doing great things. You yeah. Know, I've seen your products. I would love to try maybe some facials. I, I got don't think you. Great, right? Yes. <laughs> no, you are you fine, me, right? Mm -hmm. So let, let me tell you. Let, let me ask you one, one more question. <clears throat> Is this for all sex, males, females, or you have like? Yes, it mm -hmm. is. Um, most of my products at this point mm -hmm. is um, unisex. So even the beard, I have an oil for the hair, but it's, it's good I for the beard. The beard. <laughs> <laughs> so it, they are um, herb infused, which I learned all about here. What is, what is herb infused? Um, meaning that I have taken the herb rosemary oh, oh, and I've oh. taken the benefits from it wow. and made it into wow. an oil. Wow. And so that's one of them with a peppermint wow. scent. But then I took the hibiscus oil, I mean hibiscus herb mm -hmm. with a little bit of moringa powder and I have extracted the benefits from those herbs wow. until it um, dispersed uh, at, you know, for the lack of a better word, that into a oil. Quality to yeah, it's, it's like it's straight from the motherland. Wow. That's why the brand is called Motherland Essentials. Wow. And so yeah, wow. you can put it in your hair. That's normally what the women would do, mm -hmm. but it's unisex in that the men can use it for their beard. Yeah. Because it's good that you said for the women, because I found most um, in Ghana, uh, females are wearing wigs. Yeah, and they you always know. say, you know, natural hair is very difficult to to maintain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, what do you have to say about that? I have to say that um, at Ghana, because I, I hate to speak for Africa when I've okay. only been in Ghana. Ghana, right? Ghana has been colonized as well. The whole uh, white wait, Jesus. Wait a minute, yeah, really? that's not real. Oh, Our wow. Jesus, his name is not even that. It's Yeshua, Yeshaya, mm. and he is black. In the scripture, the same Bible they read every Sunday, which is not the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. The Sabbath is the seventh day, which is Saturday. Mm -hmm. And so they have been colonized and thinking that Sunday is a holy day, it's a Sabbath day. No, the, even the commandments that they read tell you what day the holy mm. day is, or tell you to remember the holy what day. day. Is it? It's Saturday, it's oh, the seventh wow. day, yeah. And mm. then in the com commandments, he say, thou should not kill, thou should not steal, all these thou. But then you get to the fourth commandment and it say, remember, the Sabbath day and keep it holy. He didn't wow. have to use the word remember. He knew we would forget. 
And wow. so Ghana is colonized in that they think, believe in this white man saving them with blonde hair and blue eyes. They believe Sunday is the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And they also believe in the beauty America has set. So when they wear those wigs and they do these things to their hair, they are trying to upkeep with a look that mm. they that we have told Picture them is them. the yeah. yeah, we have told them is the standard. Right. And that when they say natural hair is hard to maintenance, that that is what they've been taught because it's your hair. <coughs> you wake up if it needs oil, you put oil. If right. it's dirty, you wash it. Mm -hmm. Like it is it is about understanding who you are and caring to get back to wow. that originality. Wow. Yeah. Now tell me this. You establishing business here in Ghana. Yeah. What are some of the challenges you, you encountered? Um, that's a very good question. Mm. Thank you. Um, I'm not a citizen. Okay. So there are strict rules in place when it comes to actually mm -hmm. being the owner. Okay. And so because I have built a rapport mm -hmm. in the Ghanaian community, I was able to collaborate with a um, inspiring Ghanaian Gana okay. here oh, wow. to make sure I can get an LLC and things okay. like that. Okay. Okay. And so when I am garnered citizenship, I will be able to switch that over to, to be owner. solely okay. me. Okay. But at this point, yes, I had to collaborate with someone who's a citizen and I had to pay a financial fee <laughs> in order to get this wow. under, you know, but get I thought this the done. Year of return kind of gave oh this. my God, you <laughs> are funny. You know that was <laughs> You are good. You are very good. The year to return, in my opinion, was a money grab. Oh, wow. I have not been off of free land since I've been here. No land. No, I have paid for my land. Now, granted, I'm a part of a great community, a Pan-African village, that has packaged the deal mm -hmm. and offered me quite a bit for the amount I paid wow. for the land, mm -hmm. um, and which was very affordable. Okay. But in, in just a normal sense of saying, we really want to give y'all free land, that is not real. No. Like, no, they, oh they got gosh. them billions that year, and that was the end they of it. They treat, Even they, they won't. One, one, one. <laughs> Even citizenship is so hard here. Really? I have people who have went to Kenya and got citizenship so, within a few months. Yeah. Here they are fighting us left and right, mm. and it is literally why like... Why do you think that is, though? Because they welcomed you guys. I don't, I'm, I'm trying to figure that out myself. The mm. only thing, and this is my opinion, okay. don't drag me in mm -hmm, the comments, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but Amer uh, Ghana is colonized. America runs Ghana. And so if America sees a second exodus to a specific location, now they're going to buckle down on your president. Mm. And that the thing I know to be true is that Ghana was the first person to make vaccinations mandated. Mm. How? Mm. How was Where America not the one to, mm. to really buckle down with mm. it? How is the numbers so few here? But we have a mandate here mm -hmm. when the numbers are high, high mm -hmm. in these other places. It's about the second exodus. They they want it's to coming. continue to control us. It's coming. Yeah, it is wow. happening. It is now. Wow. Yeah. This is very interesting conversation. Yeah, it I'm is. Really, I'm really enjoying it. I am enjoying you as now, well. You have good questions. <laughs> <laughs> you you spoke about lands. Mm -hmm. I heard you you own some lands here. Acres, I do. As a matter of fact, let's talk about it. Um, yes, I own um, one plot of land and my mm -hmm. uncle owns two plot of land. So okay. we're almost, my cousin owns two plot of land as well. Okay. So we have a little bit under an acre and a half collectively just within my immediate family. Okay. And um, yes, we have managed to clear it and we're going to take a walk there today so I can actually show oh, wow. you and, and show you my vision wow. of the land. Also, wow. I sell land to the diaspora, so I'll show you some of their plots oh, really? as well so you can see what they're so doing. So if someone is watching right now yeah. and wants land, yes. you can assist. I can help you i can do it all sure. yes wow. and it's all legit mm -hmm. it's all like packaged for you and mm -hmm. so normally if you was to buy land outside of this pan-african mm -hmm. village you will have to go through owning the land making sure it hasn't been sold to a thousand people mm -hmm. already making sure you surveyed the land demarking the land mm -hmm. checking the soil of the mm -hmm. land that is a lot to do so what we have done as um uh executive board or whatever and I'll say that is that we have put together a package where you it comes with your indenture it comes with surveying of the land wow. this is virgin soil so it's never been cut before mm. you'll be the first person ever in to life to it. cut down that tree and to own it yeah outside that, of the king that's amazing because yeah. you told me in, in, in America 
people you know that has, doesn't have any land there. Mm -hmm, no. I think it's about time because the U.S. dollars is bigger when it comes here. Yeah. So I think they could probably buy acres when they. they yeah, and they can they can make their money um, spread out and you know last longer or mm -hmm. basically work better for them here wow. if they have an income in America because said the dollar is higher than the CD. But yeah, even with just outside of purchasing the land, we can help you with, and the company is called Ghana Consultations, we can help you with clearing the land, with fencing the land. We can start your garden for you. Even if you're not on the ground, Ghana is somewhere you want to invest in, but you want to do it properly so that you're not being scammed. And that's where Ghana Consultations come into play. We wow. make sure that everything is legitimate. The people that are involved in this have a, a reputation to protect and so everything has so been done the name for of the you. company is Ghana consultations Ghana consultations okay. yeah okay mm -hmm. but what do you do different that made it easy for you to adapt you know you're knowing all this land nobody's gonna steal from you because I um I met the higher-ups oh, I met wow. who was involved in this I taught I know the people who are the legend this is a legendary project and so mm. in the next 10 years people are gonna talk about how a group of diaspora came to Ghana and build a community mm. when I first started this project it was all bush mm. the Ghanaian had to walk with me with a machete and chop down wow. as we walk wow. now you go we have paved some roads wow. you have street lights coming on wow. some people have their boreholes some people have their solar panel systems wow. it is a community we've never done this in America we can't even agree as Americans on a general conversation mm. let alone come together and say hey we're gonna build this land we're gonna have a store here this a restaurant beautiful. here yeah it is it's, it's extremely beautiful in the next 10 years this is a big deal so I said all that to say the people who implemented this project Mm -hmm. are influential people in Ghana you know them know. they are the king they are the chief they it's are true, the rabbi know, yeah. they yes they are very influential they can't put their name mm. on anything mm. so before they decided to stamp their name it's of 100%. approval on it they have done everything for it. they've mapped it out so our people are confident with coming back and owning land I saw a community when I got here yeah everybody the diaspora yeah speaking I see you know our mothers yes bye -bye, yes it's great out here yeah honestly I can vibe for for this, this mm -hmm. land. yeah let me ask you this I I, I know it, it hasn't been all roses oh no mm -hmm. not at all it hasn't been all roses what would you say are some of the things that you know really kind of made you almost like mm, I want to pack my bag and go back <laughs> oh, um, let's see. Um, so the overcharging from the Ghanaian to the American mm. can be a bit difficult, mm -hmm. especially when you are a resident of this country. And so being a resident of this country for one year and nine months now, I understand how much bananas cost. Mm. I know how much a taxi drive a ride cost. And so it's very disturbing for you to now know my face and you to still think I am rich and say, I think you should pay 10 CDs for a banana instead of the four CDs that the rest of the Ghanaians Because we have told you guys come with bags of loads I, I of get US it. dollars. You have been colonized. That's why. Really? Yes, you have been colonized to believe so you, a certain way about it. Bags of dollars. No, and... not at all. I make CDs. <laughs> like, I wish. I, w I would tell you. I would help people if I came. I would bought more land. I just told you I bought one plot right. of land and my uncle bought two plots mm. of land. If I came with bags and bags mm. of money, why wouldn't I just buy five acres if it's that available to me I, I, I don't I, have it that's why that's true, the yeah. answer but I think that's a whole stereotype about what we think Ghanaians think of what the dash friends are yes and please are. that would change true education yeah. what we are doing here now mm -hmm. and that could be a bit frustrating like when you just you I live amongst you now I am your neighbor I am a resident and soon you to be to citizen referred to as a brody? <laughs> yeah you know and that's disrespectful because that, that it means white man mm. and so it is very if we're not able to say that the Ghanaian lack critical thinking mm -hmm. that the Ghanaian lack the uh, mm -hmm. sense of urgency mm -hmm. if that is disrespectful mm -hmm. to your community then you saying calling me a Bruni yeah. is very disrespectful yeah. to where I come you, from you think we don't like challenging our intellectuals like our mindset what we've been learned taught we don't like to ask Ghanaians be honest because this channel it's all about honest. Yeah, it's hard. Yo, the yo, truth has to come out yeah. before there could be a change. Yeah. Honestly speaking, the mind states of the Ghanaians. I think you guys grew up to not challenge your grandmothers, your mm. grandfathers. It was a sense of hierarchy you never that was never stolen mm -hmm. from you. So that I think made you all mm -hmm. be I want I don't want to say become yes man but no when it comes to critical thinking it's all about 
uh, yes, please, mm -hmm. sure, but sure. Even if culture. there's not, even if, yeah. And, and that's fair to say mm -hmm. that, okay, it's culture. But me coming from America here, mm -hmm. and I am trying to get clarity on a certain topic, and you will not give me clarity because you don't want the confrontation. Yeah. You will just say, yes, please. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't worry, don't worry. Mm -hmm. That is that won't give me clarity. You know why? No. Because I really need the worry. Okay. I've learned that if you say don't worry, mm -hmm. don't worry, I probably need the worry. <laughs> if you say, oh, oh, my dumb, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it probably means you don't understand me. That and so true. it's a it's a, a fine line mm. between the comprehension mm. from your language and my language. And so I don't think that it's a bad thing that mm -hmm. you guys are critical thinkers. I'm not shaming you or being mm -hmm. mean at all. Mm -hmm. I just think, like you said, it's your culture. Right. And so for us, that causes a problem because mm -hmm. we're not getting clarity. Mm -hmm. I need you to understand. You think that is impeding me. growth here in Ghana? Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, it's. I, I'm really being careful with my words. Honestly, I would say the, the same. I'm being honest with you. The, I, I think so too. I traveled a little bit. Mm -hmm. I was there in China. I've mm -hmm. seen their work ethic. Yeah. Six o'clock is six o'clock. Yeah. I became a totally different human being. Mm -hmm. And I saw how that developed their nation. Yeah. I came back and everybody's just so chilled. Yeah. Sometimes you can it's be like, chilled, oh, but you know. Yeah. It's not a, it's when a, it comes to work. Like I'm designing my house. All praises to the most high. I can't <laughs> even believe I'm saying that. That's to let y'all know where I come from. Y'all right. think it's this rich thing. Mm -hmm. No one for generations, for at least 40 mm -hmm. decades in my family has ever owned land. And so for me to say I'm designing my house, that is something you guys know very easily. Like to say, okay, I'm gonna put a shad here right. or a shack here, whatever. Like I'm designing my house and I tell my architect, hey, I want the whole upstairs to be the master room. It's a loft type setup. And he says, Oh, I, I thought you may needed this or I mm. thought you, you meant this. Mm. And so it becomes a problem because now that's my money. It's like, yeah, okay, to, I just yeah. paid for that. Like, you know, how, how so you clarity is this, important. Though? Um, I think we're fixing it. We're okay. fixing it because okay. us being here, you have to come home and fix mm -hmm. things on the inside. True. And so me being here, us having this dialogue, me being a neighbor to the Ghanaians, I'm, I'm going to voice my opinion. I'm going to say, sure. I don't think you understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Say back to me what, mm -hmm. what I just said. Exactly. And then when they say it wrong, you say, oh, that is not what I meant. But what I learned from you all is my tone, mm. is I can get my message across without an attitude. Mm -hmm. I can mm -hmm. get my mm -hmm. message across without being mm -hmm. rude or harsh. Okay. Okay. You know, even mm -hmm. with, um, to me, there's a lack of urgency. Okay. Even with me explaining, I need this now, let's do it. It's yeah. a way to do it. And yeah. I learned that from you all, to have a bit more patience. <laughs> Like, because y'all so lax. You like, need that in Ghana. Yeah, here. you need patience. Or you it have comes, an attitude every day. Yeah, it came with time because I'm here <laughs> one year, nine months. But at about that six month mm -hmm. mark, I was still like frustrated. Yeah. Like, oh, oh my yeah. God, what it are you not understanding? Yeah. yeah. But so. you, you, you are almost, you, you've got it. I must yeah. say, you, you are living here. Mm -hmm. Will you say you are comfortable in Ghana? I am. I'm comfortable. I am safe. Mm. Um, I am amongst, you know, people who are, have the same mindset that are like minds that are doing things they want to do. Um, I, I, I feel extremely comfortable once I started learning the culture. That's mm. very important. Mm -hmm. Learning the culture and attempting to learn the language because I have not gotten there yet. No I know a few words. No, it's for me, it's, it's more fun to hear. Uh, me oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is good enough. Yes, I am trying. I know my greetings, like good morning, good afternoon, good night. Okay. And so I think attempting to learn the mm. language, uh, definitely learning the culture, because okay. you guys are very culture oriented. Exactly. And um, I believe that that will not only bridge that gap mm -hmm. between us, but that will allow for the diaspora to come here and be comfortable, that like once true. they learn that. Yeah. That is true. Let's talk about current affairs. Is Ghana hard or getting harder now? Um, cost of living. Man, what's wrong with Ghana? Fuel prices are over the roof. When I first came here, gas was to, to run a car was mm -hmm. like seven. Wow. Now it's 13, almost 14. Yes. And I personally think that Ghana is getting too high for its conditions. Mm -hmm. Their roads are still not paved and things like that, mm -hmm. but yet they want to tax us on every end, e levy. Mm -hmm. And then there's another fee that they put into place. And so to me, it's baffling because I feel like the Ghanaians are the ones suffering the mm -hmm. most. They, to me, they're trying to capitalize off of the second exodus. 
They see all these people and mm -hmm. they're like, okay, everyone's saying a Ghana is cheap, Ghana is mm -hmm. too affordable. So we're gonna do all of this to get all the money of the people that's here. Mm -hmm. But the Ghanaians are the ones suffering from it. Like, and so I don't, it's, it's like an attack on your own people. Mm -hmm. And so I do think that, a, a, especially a crowd, they're like New York again. Like I think they're doing too much. Yeah. I think everything is too high. A loaf of bread when I got here was I four CDs. To ask you, why move so far from Accra though? I don't like Accra. Like, why not? It's because, the city. Everything happens there. Yeah, and I don't like city. I came oh, here really? to be. Uh, sustainable to be sustainably off of the grid okay. i want to own my own land okay. i want to have my garden i want to you know raise my children mm -hmm. and i want a family structure okay. i'm not trying to be in a limelight and scene i'm not trying to be the next movie star mm -hmm. i'm not trying to be in the five-star hotels and just live in this fancy glamour mm -hmm. that's what america offers they want to <laughs> offer this look to me a cry is trying to keep up with america and i'm it's nothing against a cry because i want them to advance for me personally, I do not want Someone that life. Someone said, Ghanaians are obsessed trying to be like the whites. Yep. What do you think? I think they're, we, it's been colonized here as well. Mm. You guys are in it, so it might be a little hard to see it, just like we were in it wearing Jordans and all of this right. and not understanding we the people in this mm -hmm. book. And we didn't understand that the, the, the beauty is mm -hmm. in the eye of the beholder because they told us this white woman with long straight hair was beauty. So, okay, you've been, you've been here in Ghana for almost two years. Yes. Someone in the diaspora is watching right now, okay? they want to move back. You've seen the ups and downs. You've seen, you've done visibility checks, I would, I would say. Yes. You know what works? Yes. How, how it works? Yes. What would you advise them? Um, to come home, come back here, get you some freedom. No overhead, no loans, no debt. Ownership. Mm. Ghana is offering resources, ownership, and freedom. So I would tell you to take a leap of, leap of faith, obviously consult the most high and figure out, you know, what it is you can do here because that'll be ultimately boils down to their skill. Mm -hmm. It's hard for me to say, come here and do this job, okay. do this job. Okay. Whatever you offer, come offer it to Ghana. Mm -hmm. Take your skills, take your education, take everything that you are and bring it here so that we can build, a, so we can build but this what country. Business, let's say third business that you think would succeed if they want to invest in. Um, I'm gonna just talk about personally what I want, <laughs> which is food. Okay, food. I'm not gonna. You would be the first to say that. It, food, yes, right? because it's it's hard for me. I don't like spicy food. Ghanaians oh, really like spice. Really? Why? I don't know. <laughs> My palate doesn't allow for pepper. <laughs> but most most food here in Ghana is spicy. Yes. So I have managed to cook my own food, wow. and then I have the a few diaspora place that okay. I can go to and okay. there eat. But we need more food. When okay. I want real food, something that's um different, I have to go to a crop. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And okay. so I think the smaller towns, the smaller villages need I, food. I saw you at Jerk So. Do you yeah. like the food there? Yeah, definitely go to Jerk So. I love <laughs> the food there. It's amazing. That, that's amazing. And that's my friend. And so if I if I if he knows I'm coming, mm -hmm. I can say, hey, don't make me nothing spicy. You know, wow. that's the benefits of knowing the owner. That, that's like, special make me to this. have it. To yeah. Have that. <laughs> yeah. That is great. Let's let's move let's talk about okay. this is gonna be a little controversial. Okay. Okay. It is going to be controversial, but do you think Ghana is better than America? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It is better. It is, it is healthier. It is more freedom. I do. I think. If the is watching this, it will not compute. <laughs> the right. No, they'll be like, she's crazy. I, oh. And then even some Americans that super you know, strong and American, they're probably going to say, you know, oh my God, right. what is she talking about? But no, but the freedom peace. here, peace, freedom. yes, it's, it is better than America, wow. <laughs> okay? Are you trying to say you were not free living in America? No, I um I own I pay rent which is no ownership. Mm. I didn't have the money to own my, to own my home because wow. I wasn't even be given the financial opportunities to do that. Certain jobs are even designated for a certain group of people. And so and then you know they control who they will let the media see. And so sometimes you can't really get your business out if you can't get enough exposure. And so they even monitor that type of stuff. And so yeah, I'm free here. I am at peace. I'm practicing in my shalom which mm -hmm. means peace and yeah i have no wow. loans i have no debt you know wow. usually to do something on a big scale in america you gotta go get a loan from the white people 
you gotta say hey and then even to get the loan you have to have a credit score that's a certain um, number, number and then you have to have a certain amount of money in the bank to match what you're asking for mm -hmm. and so it's literally impossible mm -hmm. like unless you know you come from a family structure mm -hmm. that has taught you that mm -hmm. that um, field and taught you how to manage your money which I wasn't taught and how to be disciplined in what you do buy and what you don't buy wow. which I was also wow. not taught and so it's it's almost impossible for for my people and, and when I say my people in this sense I just mean my family oh, the people okay. like my mom my grandmother all of the people that was raised under mm -hmm. us we wasn't taught these type of things wow. like, yeah. what do you think Ghanaians can do better to make Ghana home to not just themselves but to the diaspora and people moving back from the US UK brass anywhere what do you think we can do different that would really create that home feeling for, for the diaspora to move back um, so what you can do to make it better for yourself is just appreciating what you have here. Mm -hmm. I come from a place where we do not have this type of opportunity and resources. So that's the first way you can make it better for yourself is just appreciating your land and capitalizing off of all of these resources and, and, and beauty here. And then what you can do to help the diaspora feel more comfortable here is just walk, understand that we your long lost cousins. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? We have been stripped of everything. And so when we come back, it's very hard for, you know, you to, you know, take our money or to scam us or to, you know, um, look at us as some type of Jay-Z. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I first got here, I had my MacBook stolen, my iPhone oh, wow. stolen, my Bluetooth stolen. Wow. And it is not a nation. It's not Ghana as a whole. Mm -hmm. It's just was a group of people here that go around when you mm -hmm. sleep and get in your window mm -hmm. and they, mm -hmm. they get your stuff. Oh, yeah. And so that that is common here. It's mm -hmm. happened to the chief. It happened to you to your own yes. people. So I'm not yes. saying it's just us, but just understanding that we are people struggling to get ourselves together. Mm -hmm. We are a people who struggling to understand mm -hmm. where we came from mm -hmm. and whose we are. We didn't even know our own lineage before wow. understanding that the Bible was our book. Wow. Like when I say they took us and did whatever with mm -hmm. us. They taught us all of their laws, all of their understanding of what certain mm. things is. And so, yeah, just, just letting us have that freedom and accepting mm. us. Like, now, you know, we're family. I, I, love, I love that you said this, okay? Someone posted a hate comment. I don't know what it's a hate. He said, what makes you think you couldn't make it in a first country, first world country, but you can make it in a third world country? What do you think about this comment? Um... I thought that comment was coming from someone who hasn't visited Ghana. Mm. And so Ghana is not the same as, as America. Mm -hmm. And so like I have been saying this entire video, opportunity and freedom is here. If you allow me to free my pineal gland, mm -hmm. I am able to tap into my creativity, mm -hmm. which means I can create a lineage and I can create um, a wealth for my family to come that's behind me wow. and so because I have that type of freedom wealth yeah exactly I can create generational wealth for my my the ones coming behind me because I am afforded the opportunity to relax wow. to smile mm. I don't have to worry about being gunned down by the policeman mm. I don't have to be worried about being snatched up and kidnapped and taken somewhere wow. like I don't have to is, worry is that about serious in America yeah especially the police brutality they just shoot us dead in the street wow. and they go to court and they win wow. like they it's like we don't have any security we don't have any say Wow. You know, there's not a, a group of black people that got a, a head person in charge that go speak for us and mm -hmm. make sure we get what we deserve. Wow. No, we're all just casually wandering around lost and, you know, thinking we're doing something. And I, I can't do what I'm doing here in America mm. because I would be too bombarded with rent is due. Mm. My rent is paid here two years. I like to say that because that's something you all put in place yeah. that we don't do in America. Okay. But because of that, and it's affordable rent, it makes thing, sense. Though? Yeah, it's a good thing because okay. I um I haven't had to think about that. Okay. If I have to say the first is coming up, oh, I have to give them six hundred dollars, oh. seven hundred dollars. This is just for a room. It's normally like twelve to you know fifteen hundred dollars to rent an apartment. Mm -hmm. So I have to give them twelve hundred dollars. Okay, so that means I can't invest into my business, which mm -hmm. is for me and mm -hmm. my generational mm -hmm. wealth. I can't invest into the land because now I'm tired. I just work twelve wow. hours. You know, it's just impossible. Like they've set up a system that keeps you working for them.
that keeps you building their generational wealth. And so you literally have no time to focus on your own lineage. Wow. Now, you, you spoke about what you're doing here. If people are watching right now, you've, you've spoken a lot of knowledge, I must tell you. <laughs> okay, people need guidance. Someone wants to speak to you. They want to talk to you. You know, contact you, get help from you. How how do they go about? Do you have a way that they well, can? Well, I actually do. Okay. You all can cash out fifty dollars <laughs> to Alita one four four K. Okay. For so that we can do a consultation. Oh wow! And you then do that. yeah, and okay. so that's with Ghana consultations as well. That's okay. where it's steam from, just okay. doing consultations with wow. people. So if you want to relocate, mm -hmm. if you're unsure, if you're afraid of some of the things you've heard about Ghana in America, because that's all they do is try to make us afraid of Africa yeah. talk to me I'm gonna let you know the real the the fake the good the bad I'm not gonna sugarcoat any of it we wow. can talk for 30 minutes or we can talk for two hours for the same $50 so if you want to relocate if you want me to look into something for you or if you want to buy land but you're not quite ready to move here I can even help you develop it while you're in America mm. everything is legit and once we get off that gun that consultation okay. you are gonna be confident you are mm -hmm. gonna be excited excited mm -hmm. and you are going to be ready to leave America wow. so I'm who you need to talk to okay wow. I'm gonna convince you okay <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, I think there's been a lot of misleading yes in, in, in propaganda in, in America yes. that scares a lot of people a lot of lies well, you know mention you know you mentioned earlier what you see on TV flies on children's face you said something like that and what yeah. other things do, do they say that really can you think it's um, that most you, people to look at that? You guys are like sleeping on straws. You don't have mm. like a real bed. In America, they ask me questions like, is there internet there? It's like, we're wow. talking on, on Instagram. So they think we don't have internet in yeah, Africa. Internet, um, they say um, TV, what about a flat screen? Like, wow. you know, they want to see how I'm living in comparison to how we live in America and they think wow. it's nothing. Straws, bamboo, sleeping outside. They even think it's lions. There's no lion <laughs> in the whole country of Ghana. They're not here. No, no, she's lying. Like, there was lion chasing me. No, it was not lion chasing him. They think it's lion, tigers, and bears. Crazy, so though. I stretch in the morning and there's a lion mm. looking in my face. But that and is I'm, luxury. Yeah. <laughs> I think we have to flip it. That yeah. is not cheap. To be able to do that, yeah. you have to be a royalty in Dubai yes. to wake up next to a lion. Yeah, even I'm Kenya, telling you. Kenya have, Kenya have a safari and right. things, but you can't sleep amongst them, you mm -hmm. know? like mm -hmm. So just the way of thinking was that yeah. it's just nothing here. Like, right. it's just hunger, mm -hmm. you know, no jobs, right. no, you know, they don't understand how you can come and build mm -hmm. here, how you have opportunities. But you opportunity. got here, you see what is happening on yeah. the continent. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. They've been lied to. They've been say? lied to, yes big lie the biggest lie in the world like mm -hmm. there's two big lies in the world one of them is who we are as a people that's the biggest lie the world has ever seen wow. is that the black people are the people in the book the people mm. in the bible the second biggest lie is that there's nothing happening in africa in ghana particularly that, they're I, lying I like that you said that because then it's deeply rooted in the youth's mindset yep Someone is watching, he's an African, Ghanaian, he's living on the continent. He's soaked with the propaganda seen on TV. Mm. America is the place to be, UK. Yeah. What advice do you have that for that person watching? Um, don't believe the hype. Okay. okay. Everything <laughs> is not mm -hmm. what you see. Mm -hmm. Okay, they are trained liars. Mm -hmm. They have been trained to lie to you because guess what? If you wake up and understand who you are, mm -hmm. what you can offer, and whose you are, you won't need them anymore. You won't need to operate in their system. You won't need their money. You won't need their approval. And that is what they don't want. They want to stay the head. They want to continue to be the oppressor. But the scriptures say that soon the oppressor will be oppressed. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, so America their time is falling. Yes. Every, all of the oppressors, everyone who's put my people under any captivity, which is every other nation, wow. they will be oppressed. Our time to be the oppressor. Wow. <laughs> wow. If someone is in America right now, tell them something. Um, Your people are watching this. They are in America. They don't know if they should move. What are you telling them? I am telling you that you deserve shalom. You deserve peace, you deserve joy, you deserve happiness, you deserve not to live in fear, you, adjo you deserve to be able to be creative. 
you know, to be able to function in all that you are, to get to your highest self. You deserve to be able to do that. You're not going to be afforded that opportunity opportunity in America. Mm -hmm. Even if you think you are doing well, you are a homeowner in America, mm -hmm. you are, you know, you have finances mm -hmm. saved up. Mm -hmm. Even if you have all of these things, the freedom that is here, it is not there. Wow. The opportunity of being self-sufficient is not there. Wow. And you deserve shalom. You deserve to put your feet up at 30. You wow. don't have to wait till you're retired at 65, wow. which is what America teaches you. Wow. You can relax at 30, I'm not telling y'all my age, <laughs> but you can relax in your 30s. That's period, you know? You can enjoy your family that you're building. You wow. can enjoy your garden. Mm -hmm. You can smile, you can laugh, you deserve it. I, I like the fact, you know, I normally talk about relationships when, yeah. I, when I, I speak to diasporas. You've been on the continent, have you tried dating? <laughs> <laughs> Why, this guy? <laughs> I mean, oh, I hate this question so much. Like, I want to spice it up, you know? <laughs> um, I think what you're asking mm -hmm. is, have I tried dating the Ghanaians? Exactly. No. <laughs> no. Why? Because the conversation barrier mm -hmm. is very difficult. Mm. It's, not, it's not any rudeness to the Ghanaian, but if I'm asking certain questions mm -hmm. and your only concern is mm -hmm. for me to smile mm -hmm. and to be happy, mm -hmm. then we will not get to the yeah, bottom sure. of certain conversations. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the conversations are just surface. I feel like you guys mm -hmm. are just such a peaceful <laughs> and happy people that it's just like, mm -hmm. oh, sure, sure. Uh -huh, uh -huh. What do you want? No mm -hmm. problem. Mm -hmm. But it's like, okay, mm -hmm. when a problem comes, you said it wasn't going to be no problem. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now how do we deal with the problem? <laughs> it's like, you, I never get real clarity in the mm -hmm. in-depth conversation what, what with would you say is your type of man um I, I'm gonna date in my tribe, okay. in my community. Mm -hmm. So the African American that okay. you guys will call the African American. Okay. So someone is watching, right? Yeah. Now. Like <laughs> <video>. <laughs> oh God! Yeah, I like um, I like good conversation. Um, I like to be able to pick mm -hmm. your brain, and more importantly, mm -hmm. my husband, because I'm really not looking for a boyfriend mm -hmm. and all of that. I want somebody that's really on mm -hmm. the train of I having think a family. Someone is out there watching. Yeah. <laughs> But I need him to be able to lead me. That mm. is very important wow. because I'm very outspoken. I'm very opinionated. Wow. And so I can't be under mm -hmm. any man. And mm. I believe in submission. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. believe in catering to my partner. Oh, really? Yeah, I believe in the family structure, the hierarchy. Uh -huh. It's the most high. It's the man. It's the woman. Okay. It's the child. Oh, it's, it's different hearing from you. From yeah, America, I know, because... right? Exactly. So that's why I want to make the point to say because they have colonized mm -hmm. us in that way as well mm -hmm. where they make us think i'm an independent woman i don't need no man for that nothing come from? that came from literally them wanting to take the black man out of the household so they can control it because wow. our men you guys too are very strong mm. and so if they can get rid of the man right. or they can make the man you know not make the man gay but if mm -hmm. they can push this gay agenda mm -hmm. hard and mm -hmm. hard and force it mm -hmm. on you then they are in control still it wow. all boils down to you snatching their control from wow. them and so yes i need a man that's a man like he is stern in his belief stern in his understanding like he's watching yeah <laughs> that deal. i am not easy to deal with either <laughs> <laughs> but I am you working work on myself. <laughs> yeah, I'm working on myself, though. Let me ask you this, okay? Uh, you've advised people to move back, and there are other diasporas who move back, mind you. But Ghana frustrated them, mm -hmm. and they went back, and they left. Mm -hmm. If they are watching right now, what would you say they should do different the next time they come, and how they can succeed? You know, when they move back again. Um, okay, so when you first come to Ghana, when mm. I first came to Ghana, the first thing I learned that was important was discipline. Mm -hmm. I had to really use my time wisely if I was going to stay here. Wow. So I had a one-year plan, a five-year plan, a 10-year plan, a 30-year plan. And so, excuse me, I was able to buckle down and say the first 
four, three to four months, I needed to relax. I needed to detox from America. A lot of people don't take that time mm. to detox. They jump right into mm. going to the parties with y'all, mm -hmm. drinking, mm -hmm. um, hanging out, you know, just, hey, I'm mm -hmm. in Ghana, look yeah. at my view, you know, social media mm -hmm. posts. They are looking good. They've gotten them dresses made and everything from scratch. They've utilized the linen and the fabric and, you know, all of this great stuff. But they didn't take time to relax and, 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 and just appreciate being here. And once you do that, some clarity come because you're on a different continent. You are by the ocean, by the water. When that clarity come, now the discipline comes into play. So wow. me personally, I have been to one party here and it was because I knew the owner and she said, please, mm. you, I okay. never see you okay. come out. And I went out. And wow. the thing, I'm not judging anyone who party, mm -hmm. but if you come here and your priorities are not together, then yeah, you've been here one year, two year, mm. and you haven't figured out how to make money. I see. You've been here six, Spend seven, eight months and you have been spinning but don't understand how you can bring it back in and then not to mention you jumped head first into maybe a business you right. jump head first mm -hmm. into saying I'm dating this mm -hmm. person and so you didn't even have time to say mm -hmm. what is for me what do I need to garner mm -hmm. like what is it that this temple needs or what the most high has aligned for me in this new life mm -hmm. and so I took time to relax and do nothing I took time to um, vet different people as far as getting into business with them and then I discipline myself there's no drinking party smoking for me anybody that know me they call mm. me grandma <laughs> they call me like you are a dope grandma is what the latest person just said to no, me you are you are like <laughs> and that's because I, I don't do I don't know if you take it as a compliment but you are a very intelligent young woman oh I take that to. as a compliment and <laughs> that is hearing that you speak this i'm like okay, yeah man, this is the most different. high it's it's some um, the fruits of the spirit that's all we're supposed to be mm -hmm. trying to get um that's the that's the whole thing sorry that we're trying to get um down packed mm -hmm. it's just to carry a certain oh uh, like kindness and mm -hmm. patience and tolerance for each other and that's the last thing i want to say on that topic too a lot of the diasporans that went back they don't want to self-observe mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so you making me frustrated it don't really mean you making me frustrated. It means I don't have the tolerance to hear you, to listen, to check myself and say, or, or even to see it from a different angle. Perspective. Yeah, a different yeah, perspective. True. And so a lot of people don't want to self-evaluate. Mm. I'm tired of this. It's yeah. my way. No, forget it. Yeah. Forget about it. Like, no, sometimes you got to say, well, I never thought of it like that. That's like, true. say that again. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. okay, so I have to learn to slow down with my speech because mm -hmm. I talk fast and the Ghanaians mm -hmm. constantly tell me, oh, madame, slow <laughs> down. Like, and so, <laughs> yeah, and I say, oh, you are so right. I, I'm sorry, I got high energy, like, sorry. Yeah. So a lot of them did not, mm. they didn't care to self-evaluate. I like that. Yeah, like we got a lot of ego. Mm -hmm. America has taught oh, us yeah. ego. Mm -hmm. And so some people don't want to put that aside. It mm -hmm. is very hard too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm no. Still working on it. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of relaxing, the beach, the ocean, we are at the the, the background is amazing. Yes. I see I, I see, see it every day. Where are we? We are at Mabel's table, which mm. is owned and operated by a uh, rabbi mm. and Kohain Halevi and his wife, Mabel Halevi. Wow. Um, and yes, they have been here for over 30 years. Wow. Um, some of these trees, coconut trees or whatever, they actually grew themselves. Oh, wow. um, we have the temple in the back and we have a restaurant here. Wow. Um, I'm, I live not too far from here, so this is my view every mm. day. Like, I, I wow. just, I appreciate it. Right yeah. <laughs> the, 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 I want to see their land. Yeah, we will here. go to my land, wow. yeah. So, Thank you so much for speaking to me. I think I love this conversation. It's amazing. Me too. Thanks if, for if having me. If you have me. your last words for the viewers, what would that be? Um, it would be buy some Motherland Essentials. Buy some products from me. You can hit me up on Instagram. It'll be posted below. Mm -hmm. um, at Mother, It's Motherland Essentials. If you want consultations or if you want to buy land, it's at Ghana underscore consul, uh, consultations. Um, and yeah, just, you know, support your girl. Go to my YouTube channel, Alita Yasha Allah, and show me some love. I'm a small business up and coming, um, and I'm trying my best to be the greatest example of someone coming from diaspora and staying here. And so, yeah, help a sister out. Support a small business that's growing big. <laughs> you are an inspiration. Thank you. Thank you so much for speaking to me. Thank you for having me. Right. I appreciate you. It's, it's a pleasure. <laughs>
So we are on your property. So you're going to show us where the land is and everything, right? Yes, yes, yes. We are here um, on in the area where I have purchased land, me mm -hmm. and my family. And so, yeah, I'm going to take you and show you where my property lines are. Okay. And I've cleared the land so we'll be able to see some of the trees. I, I, kept, I kept six pineapple trees. Mm -hmm. I got a few um, almond trees, a few palm trees that I kept. I didn't clear everything. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, at this point, I'm working with the architect to get my design built. And so mm -hmm. we're going to start building soon. I've seen we people feel... building already. Yeah. You, so, you said all diasporas? All diasporas, yep. Oh, wow. Everybody's here. It's a Pan-African village. Charlie, it's time. The time is now to move yes, back. Yes, <laughs> come on home. We are doing it here. Get disciplined. Talk to the father. And wow. yes, it is time to make it happen. No excuses. And, and OK, be careful. So really you. quick, mm -hmm. this plot here and this plot here belongs to a, a married couple, a client of mine. Mm -hmm. And so they are getting ready to clear this here. So this will not even be a road. Okay. This is all road that was temporarily created to get through. Wow. But the roads have been designated already in this area. Oh, wow. look at that. There's Wait, a, what's oh. happening? It's all flooded. Okay, we can take a... Um, no, that's the problem. <laughs> Can we go this way, maybe? Okay. So we are on your land right now. Mm -hmm. I've been flying the drone around. It's beautiful. It's huge. Thank you. So <laughs> what plans do you have for the land? Um, so I'm going to build like a loft setting on my particular. This is me mm -hmm. and my uncle. The view that you're seeing mm -hmm. now is um, my uncle has two plots and I have one plot. So okay. collectively, we almost have an acre. And so we've cleared it already, but it's grown back a little bit because of the rain. Mm. And um, basically for my side of it, um, we're going to fence it together, mm -hmm. but I'm going to build me like a loft setting. What is loft setting? It's a two story, but it doesn't require a floor for the oh. second story. So it's a little bit cheaper because there's okay. less material involved. Okay. 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 And I also am envisioning to have a bunch of glass. Uh, uh, for my house it's wow. as my windows versus two different walls oh, wow. um, so I'm so just trying to see figure the out nature and everything. yeah and it's tinted glass so I could see out but they can't see, see in oh, yeah wow. That's fancy. So, <laughs> yeah it's like but it's, it's actually more affordable than putting up more walls, walls. having wall space oh, really? because you have to do labor you have to do the brick by brick the martyr like it's more mm. material you have to buy versus to one glass panel okay. that you set in place mm. and so yeah I have a two bedroom mm. two bathroom okay. um, I have a laboratory to make all my natural products i wow. have an office space i have what we call in america mud room so when mm. you come and you see this type of stuff and mm. you are muddy okay. you stop in this certain room and duck, duck, uh, take off your shoes and wow. you hang up your coats and put your you know your umbrella if you're wet you put it's, your wet clothes it's in a there big house. <laughs> yeah it's not it's really not it's not that big it's a it's i'm maximizing my space mm -hmm. so i'm kind of finding out the most affordable way mm -hmm. in the in the way that makes the most sense to get the things I want inside of the house. Wow. Um, and so it's an open floor. So wow. the kitchen go right into the bathroom. I mean, the kitchen go right into the mm -hmm. dining room. The dining room go right into the living room. And so, yeah, I'm on the step now where I'm working with my architecture to get the correct vision mm -hmm. on a blueprint. Okay, Ghanaian architecture? Yeah, okay. Ghanaian architecture. Okay. And he's amazing. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> he's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, he gives me ideas I didn't even think about as mm -hmm. far as trying to be affordable, but also maximizing my space. Face. Um, in the back of it, I have a, a personal pool that'll be on the porch. A personal pool that means it's small. Uh, <laughs> and then I have, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then I have like a grill area, and mm -hmm. I have my garden. So that'll wow. be what I'll be looking out to. Wow. Um, so yeah, you will be able this to see that beautiful. soon because you're gonna come back and check I, me out. I am going to be here. <laughs> Hearing you say this, you you lived in America. You had no land. None of your family members you knew had land. And you have land on the continent. Yes, I'm the first person in my family, and that is a general. I've broken a generational curse. Yes. Amen. So yes. if someone is watching this, okay, they want to own their land. Mm -hmm. You know, people want to move back, even to start farming, to to live on the continent, to mm -hmm. build. To Last words before we go. Um, just do what it. Do don't do? think too hard. Don't try to have the perfect amount of money. Don't have try to have the perfect plan. Um, it's never going to be 
um, up to your expectation of what you think you would need to go to another country. And so whatever you have, you have consulted the Most High, you have fasted, and he have put this in your spirit to mm -hmm. do it because it's not for everyone. But if you know that he have told you this is where you should be, and even if it's not here, but if he told you to leave America, you need to just do it. Like just have the confidence, have the faith. And then when you get on the ground, work on yourself, take some time for yourself, discipline yourself and align, you know, what it is you want to do for the next one year, five years, 10 years, make a plan. And so, wow. and you can do it because I'm here and I definitely didn't come with a lot of money, mm -hmm. but it's happening. It's a brick by brick operation. Wow. So you don't need to have like the full complete amount of money needed nope. for the house mm -mm. before doing it. No. Nope. First start by the land and they can go through. Yep, you, you can come to me, Ghana okay. consultations, mm -hmm. and I will definitely get you straight. Everything is legit. Wow. Um, everything is a package deal, and then I will even help you with developing the land. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to go through the things that I went through all when I hassles. first got here. Yeah, all the hassles, all the frustration. You know, you don't know anybody, you don't know this. No, you know me, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I got you. <laughs> wow. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. me. Like, I mean, yeah. the scene is amazing. Yeah, we wasn't able to, you know, really go up yeah. to it, but I mean, it's flooded a small, a but, bit, but yeah. yeah, but this is yeah. a it's stable. It's, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's all well, all greenery. Wow. Thank you so much. Contact her. Her information would be on the screen, and she'll be here to help you. Yes, I got you. All right. Yep. Thank you I so much. I want to help you. <laughs> all right. Bye bye. Bye.